Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The National Weather Service. Good Friday and happy Halloween everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 31st of October. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your latest weather information. And you can find current weather information as well as our forecasts, of course, at weather.gov slash Alaska or arh.noaa.gov. The weather info line is a great uh, tool to use to find your weather information at 800-472-0391. You can find us during the day on Twitter, on Facebook at NWS Alaska, and on YouTube under NWS Anchorage or NWS U.S. Fairbanks for your afternoon forecast and then following this broadcast on our broadcast partner site alaskapublic.org you can find a link to this complete show here in Alaska weather and you can also search for AKWX TV on YouTube which will be a little bit friendlier to your phone. Here's a look at the hazardous weather outlook for tonight Then we're mainly focused on the Klondike Highway. Starting at midnight a winter weather advisory goes into effect mainly for snow. One to two inches of snow is expected to fall tonight and another two to three inches of snow is expected to fall during the daytime tomorrow, mainly in the morning before it starts to wind down in the afternoon and evening hours. A storm total of three to five inches could affect your driving plans there and visibility could be limited for a time, so make sure you're planning ahead before you go or maybe rearrange your plans just to be safe. Here's a look at the weather picture across the rest of Alaska at this point. You can see a pretty deep trough that's stretching across the southern Bering Sea and it's wrapping in a cold and wet air across the western Bering and of course Pacific moisture is feeding into that. As we put that into motion, you can see that overall trend is kind of shifting its way toward Bristol Bay at this point. Several other waves of low pressure have been working across the Gulf. The overall pattern has not changed very much, so we're simply repeating the same uh, issues that we've had for the the previous week. We've got moisture and wind moving back into southeast. We've got cold and wind that's been passing through the Aleutians. And things are beginning to freeze up across the west coast. Of course, there's plenty of shore fast ice now across the north slope, but many of the sounds are beginning to see some uh, shore fast ice as well. And a lot of the inlets are freezing up there as you look out toward Bethel and the Yukon Kuskokwim coastline. Looking at the eastern Gulf, a little bit of a break in the weather. We've seen some pockets of rainfall there today in places like Sitka picked up almost a half inch of rainfall. Yakutat, more than an inch of rainfall. So there's certainly been some pockets of wet weather. And in those pockets, it's been fairly wet. Uh, Cold Bay saw about uh, 2 point, er, point 0.2 inches of snow. Barrow saw a little bit of uh, snowfall today as well. And it looked like Juneau saw about a third of an inch with temperatures holding in the upper 40s to about 50 degrees. Around the rest of the interior, a lot of low clouds, but uh, some of that was just uh, picking up the cold air from the infrared satellite picture there. So not all of this was wall-to-wall -wall cloud cover, but there has been plenty of it out there. Looks like the main focus for wetter weather will stay generally south of the Alaska Range this weekend and uh, mainly south of the Yukon for that matter. There will be periods of mixed precipitation out across the yukon Kuskokwim Delta. Some of that will include freezing rain, generally north of King Salmon, to snow around Bethel. And then points west will also see a period of rain and snow. Across the central and eastern chain, expect wind and rain to continue, though uh, the very strong gusts are not expected at this point. And across the rest of Alaska, especially the eastern Gulf, expect clouds to fill back in as another wave, another front, is crossing the Gulf now and heading for southeastern Alaska as we go toward the end of the weekend. Here's the surface charts, and you can see several areas of low pressure focused on the map. One of those across the southern Bering at 972 millibars. Uh, the other wave that's just east of Kodiak Island earlier this afternoon, not a whole lot stronger or weaker, pretty close to the same. And another wave of low pressure uh, right around 
Prince William Sound at 988 millibars. One front is falling apart right now. That's the trough that we have drawn in here, and that's been stirring up the rainfall across Sitka, Juneau, all the way out toward Yakutat earlier today. We've got colder air, another round of it trying to drop southward across the eastern sections of Siberia. And our latest round of cold air working up against the Aleutian chain is starting to show signs of weakening somewhat. The focus is going to be uh, from this low pressure system eastward and then, of course, across the Gulf. Pockets of snow have been falling around the, uh, the western side of the Gulf and across, across a few places in the interior. Most of that is just flurries uh, to very light snow showers up around Eagle. Some light snow is falling around Barrow and, of course, the Barrow, uh, Beaufort Seacoast. As we head through the rest of tonight and tomorrow, high pressure should really tamp that down. In fact, the sky may break up a little bit and you might see some pockets of clearing. Same goes for the middle Yukon Valley. Across southwest and south central Alaska, don't be surprised to run into a few snow showers. There's been some uh, very light snow, maybe some flurries falling around the hillsides in Anchorage and south central Alaska this afternoon. Around the Bristol Bay region, you can see areas of freezing rain may be possible, especially north of King Salmon. But the further north you go, you start getting into more and more of that cold air, and snow will continue to be a chance as we head through the rest of tonight and into tomorrow. The frontal boundary across the Aleutians is hanging on there. There's certainly a difference in the air temperature that's banked right up against uh, the coastal areas there, but a lot of that isn't going to be uh, getting worse. In fact, that air seems to be mixing up a little bit, so gradually this front will probably weaken. Looking at across southeast, the front swinging across the Gulf is banking right up against southeastern Alaska. That's going to keep some of the heavier rainfall from Sitka to point southward as we go through tonight and tomorrow. Uh, periods of snow, of course, around the Klondike Highway, as we mentioned. A winter weather advisory begins at midnight, and the snow will probably continue through a good part of the morning there with storm totals upwards of 3 to 5 inches, which, as I mentioned, could make driving a little difficult if you're heading in or out of town. Low pressure will sit just east of the Kenai Peninsula and south of Prince William Sound. A 980 millibar low will focus its attention on the wet weather into the north and eastern Gulf. Across the Copper River Basin and parts of Prince William Sound, don't be surprised to see some snow showers tomorrow. But then a lot of what we'll see across the Alaska Range will be periods of MVFR tomorrow. Uh, probably not too many places actually going over to IFR conditions. And conditions generally north of uh, the Brooks Range will be limited to uh, MVFR conditions there with most of the passes in south central and north looking at at least VFR for a time. Across the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, you can see low pressures working in more of an east to westerly flow, so that wraparound snow on the northern side will probably be the worst in the morning and things should gradually settle down. Across the Pribilovs and the Aleutian chain, the front's still there, and that means we still have a lifting mechanism for clouds and precipitation. But the further east that goes, the less of a focus there will be as we head into Sunday, where we may still see some rain and snow. A better chance for seeing some light rainfall from Dutch Harbor and Unalaska and Nikolsky all the way up through the Alaska Peninsula. But on the northern side of that, including Bristol Bay, there's an opportunity for rain and snow to mix. And a little bit further south than what, what we saw on Saturday, you'll see some snow showers there. Some of that generally south of Bethel now to King Salmon and Dillingham. Across the interior, we might see a few snow showers. Some of that could be falling around Healy and Point South, but most likely what we'll see is precipitation really focused on coastal areas and the mountains there, while most other areas, including Anchorage and the Matin Sioux, probably won't see a really good focus for precipitation, it looks like, this weekend. For southeast, rainfall is still in your future as you look in from west and southwest. Wet weather is moving in toward the archipelago there, and generally north of Juneau will have a better chance of seeing some snow showers, again, still focused on the Klondike Highway and some of the higher terrain. In the Arctic coast, looks like high pressure is parked right off of Barrow, but that should lock in some low clouds, if nothing else, just some flurries for the Beaufort Sea coast and areas of fog. We have more of an offshore flow through Constabue Sound and Norton Sound, and while that may clear up the sky, it will allow temperatures to remain fairly cool, if not really cold, and of course that helps to grow more of the ice in your sounds and of course the coastal waterways there. Here's a look at temperatures then from this afternoon. Southeast saw highs only in the lower to mid 40s for most areas. Juneau might have warmed up a little bit more closer to 50 degrees by early in the day. But uh, again, by late afternoon, temperatures had cooled off a little bit by maybe even 5 to 10 degrees in some cases. Around Valdez, 36 by 4 o'clock. It was 42 in Cordova. Lower 30s for Homer and Seward, 29 in Kenai and 27 in Anchorage. Around the Matsu Valley, temperatures were also in the upper 20s, 21 around Talkeetna. 12 for the Matanuska Glacier, 16 around Gokana and Glen Allen, and low teens to mid teens around Fairbanks, Denali, and Fort Greeley. Mid teens for Eagle and Northway. Fort Yukon was showing 19 by late afternoon, and Activic Pass was only 7. And low teens for uh, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse out toward Kaktovik with single digit temps back in Barrow all the way through Wainwright, and it warmed up a little bit more as you got out toward Point Hope and Point Lay. 
Constant view sound temperatures were typically in the lower teens, though the further inland you moved, the temperatures cooled off fairly quickly as they normally do. Lower 20s around Nome, Unalakleet, and the surrounding communities were in the lower 20s. Hooper Bay was showing 19, with Savunga at 28 degrees. McGrath was 18. Around Grayling and out toward Bethel, temperatures were in the lower to mid-teens. Bristol Bay saw temps in the teens and 20s, with King Salmon a little bit milder at 26. Kodiak Island was in the mid-30s with the Alaska Peninsula in the lower to mid-40s. The Pribilovs in the mid to upper 30s with St. George at 38. And Adak and Atka as well as Shemya all in the lower 40s this afternoon. As we get into tonight, look for the coldest weather to be north of the Alaska Range with most areas at or just above zero by a few degrees. Around Nome, 10. Looks like Barrow's at 6 tonight with Fairbanks holding on to uh, 5 above. South Central will drop into the mid-20s to lower 30s, uh, lower 30s mainly around coastal areas, and that includes southeast with temperatures there from the lower 30s to mid-30s for the northern parts of southeast coastal areas in the lower 40s. The Alaska Peninsula in the upper 30s to about 40 degrees around Sand Point, Dutch Harbor about 38, and 40 degrees out around Chemia with St. Paul at 30 with a high of 36 tomorrow. Southwest and Bristol Bay, look for temps in the upper 20s to lower 30s tomorrow. As you get a little bit closer to King Salmon and Dillingham, look for temps there closing in on 40 degrees, and that type of milder weather will continue around the Alaska Peninsula. 44 for southeast in Kodiak Island, and it looks like most areas in southeast will be closer to the mid-40s to maybe even 50 degrees around Sitka, though that type of heat will be a little bit closer to Sitka alone with some of the southern areas in the upper 40s. For the interior, mid to upper teens are expected, 17 in Fairbanks, 4 around Arctic Village, and low to mid teens for the Arctic Coast with Kotzebue Sound in the low to mid teens and 22 in Nome 30 in Nunavak Island. On to flying weather now, expect MVFR conditions across most of the Arctic coast to the south and west of Wainwright. You might catch some breaks there. Across the yukon kuskokoom coastline, expect IFR conditions through the afternoon uh, from Hooper Bay all the way through Nunavak Island out toward Newtok and probably just east of Bethel, but most of the coastline will at least be in MVFR. Across the Alaska Peninsula and generally north of the chain, expect MVFR conditions to prevail, and that goes for the Pribilof Islands as well. IFR from Prince William Sound, Portage all the way out toward Yakutat, and mainly along the higher terrain of southeast, uh, generally from Juneau southward toward Ketchikan and Annette. Here's your past conditions. In Anaktuvik, we expect VFR. MVFR conditions on the north side, same goes for Adigan Pass tomorrow. As we look at Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, expect IFR conditions through most of the day. This will be one of the exceptions here. We expect better weather in Rainy Pass at MVFR. Windy Pass should be VFR conditions. Same goes for Isabel Pass, probably getting there by the afternoon, maybe starting out at MVFR, though. Probably lowered ceilings and visibility in Mentasta Pass developing throughout the day, starting at VFR. Tanita Pass, go early. Looks like MVFR conditions will develop during the day. And Portage Pass, we expect to be IFR, especially on the eastern side. And then Chilkoot and White Pass, we would expect those areas to be MBFR, at least maybe even IFR in the morning, thanks to the snow developing in the region. Freezing levels, obviously the cold's taking over Alaska now, and the uh, warmer air aloft has retreated even further southward, two to 4,000 feet south of Adak and Atka. We've got a 2,000-foot freezing level right over Kodiak and just points west over the Chelikoff Strait region, and then you have to go south of Haida Gwaii to reach uh, freezing levels above four to even 6,000 feet. Icing potential is certainly there, though, with many of these storms working through the Gulf and banking that moisture right up against the coast. Uh, you'll find a, a decent amount of moisture around the north and eastern coast. Uh, occasional moderate is certainly possible out around the west coast, above 4,000 feet there for the YK and Nunavak Island, generally uh, from Bethel and northward, and spotty areas of icing across the Aleutians, generally above 6,000 feet. And some areas even north of the Yukon uh, might run into some light to isolated moderate. That will be above 2,000 feet. The jet stream shows a predominant area of low pressure still hugging the southwestern coastline with high pressure generally west of the Bering Strait. That's keeping a northerly flow dropping into the heart of Alaska and then wrapping that into our Gulf weather situation here. The stronger winds are south of this low at 125 knots and they slow dramatically as they cross the Gulf. And all that moisture and all that storm energy has to go somewhere and that's banking that into those surface systems across the north and eastern sections of the Gulf. At 9,000 feet, you can see our weather pattern clearly here. Low pressure sitting over Bristol Bay. It's dragging in winds offshore to about 20 to 25 knots and bringing in a west and southwesterly flow into the Gulf between 30 and as high as 50 knots. It's spreading that out across southeastern Alaska. Some of the strongest winds will be south of south, or, let me try that again, south of Sitka at this point. And then more of a northwesterly flow coming into areas across the Beaufort Sea coast, and that's about 10 to 20 knots or so. Across south central, winds will come in around 15 to 30 knots and slowing dramatically again as they run into south central in the mountains. Look for an offshore flow to continue around Norton Sound, 20 to 
35 knots at their greatest, and a northwesterly flow from Adak, Atka, and the Alaska Peninsula, and a southwesterly flow still coming into southeast around 35 knots or so. Light northerly winds still coming into the Beaufort Sea coast around 10 to 15 knots, becoming east to west across the Brooks Range, also about 10 to 15 knots. We'll watch for some occasional moderate turbulence there as those winds are crossing over the mountains at different speeds and uh, different heights there and changing direction a little bit over the Brooks Range. And we can expect some chop across Norton Sound and in the range of the mountains there around southwest and also around the Alaska Peninsula where we've seen some stronger gusts. In fact, today around Dutch Harbor, we saw gusts up over 55 knots or so. So we would expect some of that to still be maintained across the Alaska Peninsula tomorrow, especially in the gap prone areas and then downrange from that. Below 4,000 feet will be the primary issues. And remember, we've got a barrier jet or a fast moving river of air, kind of at a lower level here. So below 4,000 feet, anywhere from the Dixon entrance to Sitka, coastal areas, all the way around to Prince William Sound, you might run into a ribbon of fast moving air that would probably shake you up a little bit. We'll call that occasional moderate as we head through Saturday. Let's look at your aviation forecast. In just a few minutes, we'll have a look at your marine weather and of course, the current sea ice edge. Stay tuned. Good evening, folks. I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar Flying. Our guest is a return guest, J.C. Coffey. J.C. was on last time. He's a retired naval aviator uh, and a very distinguished career, and now is uh, working with NOAA uh, and is doing some pretty neat things with unmanned aircraft. Welcome back, J.C. Thanks, Harry. It's great to be back. Let's pick up where we left off. Um, you were talking about some of the missions that you've been flying. Um, how do you see um, how do you see the whole process moving forward? Is it easier to fly the missions up here? About the same? Is it? Yeah. So I think uh, I think we're hitting a critical time to introduce this technology into into the airspace. Uh, the pacing element for years in aviation is propulsion, and because of the power density, we can get into batteries or the small uh, gas-powered engines, we're, we're able to do stuff that we weren't able to do on small aircraft in the past. And then it's a command and control. Uh, because of the amount of data and the computing power we can put on these small UASs, the command and control is very safe now. We're able to, to do what we can never do on a small UAS uh, very, very effectively now. And then finally, the miniaturization of our systems is incredible. I mean, we, the radars used to be thousands of pounds, now we got them down to two pounds. So we can put a lot of capability on a very small UAS and uh, get observations that required multi-engine, big old aircrafts. And we've been very thoughtful in introducing this technology into the national airspace. And, and being here in Alaska, this is one of the most interesting places to fly, uh, especially for our environmental folks uh, in the National Weather Service. Uh, we want to get environmental intelligence to better protect the people of Alaska from invading weather. Have you, have you discovered any problems that you would call uniquely Alaskan? Any, any problems with icing or engine problems? Or yeah, sure. Battery in the coal problems? Sure. I, you, you look at Alaska and it's vast and so are the observation requirements. And you need ruggedized platforms to fly in this very challenging environment. And you need very hardy people to fly in this, this really tough, hardy environment. And we're able to find those folks up here. Uh, University of Alaska is cutting edge in this kind of technology. A lot of our, our contractors and partners up here in, uh, in both the government sector and in industry are doing things that 10 years we couldn't do up here. And Harry, you've been a big part of that. And thanks for, uh, for helping us along up here and introducing this technology safely in the airspace. Well, you're kind to say that, but that, that brings up a good question. What can we do? Because we're all believers in what this can bring. And I think it will make not only uh, our skies safer, but it's going to bring a lot of, of things that will benefit the people of Alaska, the people of this country. How do we get the word out more than we are right now? That's right. I, I think uh, we do a lot of good work in uh, bringing users up here. We reach out, uh, do STEM kind of uh, education up here. But it is, we have to get continue to communicate the good things we're doing here. Um, recently, when we fly here, we, uh, we always know TAM and let all our manned aircraft partners know where we're flying. Uh, we put together an Alaskan communications plan so that we're able to communicate with everybody else flying in the airspace that we're flying in and, and let them know we're going to be flying at a certain time, altitudes, things like that. So airspace management has been very critical 
Uh, but more and more communication is never bad. Well, I, I'm glad to hear you say that about airspace management. My, my theory is I, I don't, I'm not worried about mid-air collisions with the people who are playing by the rules. I worry a great deal about the hobbyist who just who, who doesn't join the AMA, who just goes down to the hobby store and buys a quadcopter and then flies like happened a couple of months ago in the east-west water lane out at Lake Hood. That's what scares me. It's people that don't take the time to learn the regulations. But uh, thank you for, for what you do. Um, when are you coming back to Alaska? Uh, I can't come back here enough. And we'll <laughs> be doing a lot of operations here in the next year. So we're looking forward to doing that. Uh, and everything from studying the, the marginal ice zone and then being able to predict where the ice is so ships can pass and, and our research vessels can get up there safely to doing atmospheric work. So we, we have a whole spectrum of work we're going to do up here and we're looking forward to it. Any last thoughts? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we talk about the four Ds, uh, where we use them, but why we use these things uh, here is because they're efficient, effective, economic, and they're environmentally friendly. So you think emissions flying uh, a four-engine aircraft that burns 700 gallons per hour out to do these observations, and now we can do a 24-hour observation on, uh, on an I a hydrogen fuel cell or a gallon of gas. So we're really we're, we're very thoughtful about how we're introducing this technology, and, and we want to stress the environmental friendliness of it, too. Well said. Thanks for being Sir. on the program. It's great Look to be forward to next time you're in town. Can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. And I want to remind you that uh, it's brought to you by the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, which is a nonprofit, member-supported organization, and it's supported by you through your membership. Membership's only $35 a year, 110 for corporate members, and uh, November will be our membership month. We'll start uh, getting new, new, we'll send out letters for new membership for 2015. So I encourage you, please sign up so that we can have programs like this, and also the upcoming November 15th Safety Seminar. I hope you can all attend. Until next time, fly safe. Thanks, Harry. We'll see you again on Monday. Here's a look at today's Sea Ice Edge. You can always check this yourself anytime by going to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice.php and you'll be able to download the shape files or the information to make a map similar to this. And this shows us the continuous area of ice across the Beaufort Sea. Uh, there are probably still a few pockets of open water, but it has been filling in very quickly across the Beaufort Sea coast and now rapidly spreading into the Chukchi Sea. You can see some of the shore fast ice developing south of Wainwright and into Kotzebue Sound around Kotzebue itself and then around the coast of Shishmara. Around Norton Sound, especially north of Unalakleet, and around the coast near Amonic and Hooper Bay, and into places like Newtok, and uh, southward toward uh, the Kuskokwim Valley. We're starting to see those areas uh, ice up fairly quickly. And watch for a post on uh, NWS Alaska on Facebook if you'd like to see some of the interior areas of uh, the ice thickness on the rivers and, of course, some of the lakes there in the interior. There'll be some information coming out about that. Uh, in the next couple hours. Across southeast, the winds will be predominantly from the south and southeast through Saturday. Look for winds as high as 30 to 35 knots with uh, 4 to as high as 7 foot seas there across the southern inner passageway. Southerly flow across the Lynn Canal at 25 knots with a 5 foot sea and southerlies also across coastal areas between 20 and 25 knots. Expect seas from 11 to about 13 feet on Saturday and we'll see those seas come up even more on Sunday, anywhere from 14 to as high as 15 or even 16 feet outside of Sitka. Still looking at a south and southeasterly flow. Uh, some of the winds across the southern inner waterways, anywhere from 15 to about 20 knots with seas ranging around 3 to 4 feet. Across south central, a northeasterly flow cutting across Prince William Sound with winds around 25 knots. Look for a southeasterly flow outside of Middleton Island and northeasterly is coming down Cook Inlet and outside of Resurrection Bay between 25 and 35 knots. One exception though will be southwesterly east of Kodiak Island with the frontal boundary sitting right about here and low pressure very close to Kodiak. Look for an unsettled weekend to start things off. As we get into Sunday, winds diminish. We'll still keep winds up uh, east of Kodiak Island with 30 knots with an 11 foot sea, but winds diminish in just about all other places, 15 to about 25 knots with easterlies now inside of Prince William Sound with a 3 foot sea. Northeasterlies down the Cook Inlet, 15 to 20 knots there, 4 to 5 foot seas and west of the Barrens, 15 knots with a 3 foot sea and westerlies. Uh, in Chelikoff Strait with a three-foot sea there, obviously still have some areas of low pressure and a front in the vicinity. Around the Alaska Peninsula in Bristol Bay, easterlies at 20 knots with a 10-foot sea, westerlies north of Cold Bay and in the Pacific Coast, 
up to 40 knots with 19 to 24 foot seas there for Saturday. Uh, things improve a little bit on Sunday with a northerly flow inside of Bristol Bay to 15 knots northwesterlies down the coast to 11 foot seas there with 25 knot winds and 30 knot winds on the Pacific coast from 9 to 15 foot seas there. Across the Aleutians, a west and northwesterly flow still working across. Uh, some of the stronger winds will be at around Nikolsky to Unalaska, 30 to 35 knot winds there with 35 knots. Also around Kiska with a 17 foot sea in the Pacific coast looking at 25 to as high as 40 knot winds. Uh, south and west of Nikolsky to uh, south of Unalaska in the Pacific side, 24 to 25 foot seas are expected. By Sunday though, all things are looking better. Northwesterly flow continues, but winds diminish to 30 knots and seas drop off to about 12 to 14 foot and uh, 13 to 11 to 13 foot seas there across the Pacific as we go into Sunday. Now for the west coast, a north and easterly flow coming out of Norton Sound and around the YK Delta at 30 to 35 knots. Easterlies coming out of the Kuskokwim Bay at 25 knots with a 10 foot sea. Northwesterlies continue around the Pribilovs with a 13 foot sea on Saturday. That improves to 9 feet by Sunday. Northerly still coming out of the Bering Strait and crossing St. Lawrence Island, Nunavak Island and the Kuskokwim Bay all around 20 to 30 knots and six to seven foot seas there from Nunavak Island into uh, the Kuskokwim Bay area. Northerlies around St. Matthew though should produce 10 foot seas as we end the weekend. And across the North Slope, all areas here are icing up from Barrow eastward toward Kaktovik, a northeasterly wind with 15 knots. Look for five foot seas west of Wainwright and around Cape Lisburn and Point Hope. Expect northeasterlies 35 knots there with a nine foot sea and northeasterlies outside of Kotzebue Sound at 25 knots. That becomes easterly with time on Sunday. Winds are still staying up there from Wainwright to about Point Point Hope with a 30 knot wind and 6 to 8 foot seas, otherwise 10 to 15 knots across the Beaufort Coast to Barrow. Uh, you'll see that on Sunday. Recapping tonight's weather, a very unsettled pattern for the Gulf Coast and Southwest as well as the Aleutians tonight. A winter weather advisory for the Klondike Highway expecting 3 to 5 inches of snow by midday tomorrow. A winter weather advisory begins at midnight tonight and will continue until about 1 o'clock tomorrow. Look for a front to slowly die off as it moves into southeast, bringing more wind and rain to the southeastern part of our state, south central, expecting periods of rain mainly along coastal areas, but don't be surprised to see some snow showers along the hillsides and maybe down where you live, but it should just be in passing. Across the southwest, another storm at 973 millibars will keep snow falling around Bethel with rain and snow and maybe some mixed precipitation into the weekend. Have a good weekend. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.